Welcome to Film Shapes, the podcast. Good morning, Rolly. How are you going? Very well, thank you. And on the line we have Merv. How are you, Merv? Well, thank you. Good, good to hear. Uh, today we're going to talk about Solo. Uh, this is a standalone origin story which follows part of the life of a young Han Solo. Uh, it's directed by Ron Howard, who took over from Lord and Miller after they were removed due to mm. creative differences. Uh, starring Alden Ehrenreich as young Solo, Emilia Clark, Donald Glover, Woody Harrelson, Paul Bettany, etc. A lot of people in this. Uh, written by Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and his son, Jonathan. Um, now, guys, what did you think? Rolly? I felt, uh, firstly... My first impression, sitting in the theatre, mm. I felt uh, this feels a little bit like Star Wars light. It's like the Star Wars film you watch when you're not really watching a full Star Wars film. But mm. I, I kind of came around from that the more I watched, I think. Mm. Okay. Mm. H- how about you, Merv? Um, I think, yeah, it started off a bit murky, but by the end of it, I left with a smile. I, yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> mm, okay. Murky. How do you mean? Um. Well, the, the start was a bit muddled story-wise and also just the the colour. It was just really dark and <laughs> really? some of those early scenes were just, I know, just difficult to watch. Oh, you mean on the... I like, found them unclear, on, but then it just seemed to pick up. I think that was Ron Howard's choice then, wasn't it? Yeah. You mean to, to start it off a bit um, dismal? You're talking about with Lady Proxima in, in the uh, on Corellia. Mm. Yeah. I suppose that that was that was an idea. It got a bit um, a bit flashier later, didn't it? Well, certainly with Lando's capes, it got flashier. <laughs> yeah, and that uh, Kessel Run that was quite quite uh, bright. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah, I, I like this. I, I've heard a lot of um, uh, poo pooing about this film. Um, it didn't do well at the box office, or hasn't done so well. It's still going, of course. Um, why do you think it's got some bad press, Murph? Well, I think the um, one, I think it went through the fact that no one really asked for it. Mm. It's like, oh, do we really need a solo film? And I think people probably struggle with the idea of seeing a fresh actor portraying an existing character. Ah, uh, okay. Um, mm-hmm. The sacking of the two directors, I don't think that helped. Yeah, its marketing was a bit quiet, but when we say it hasn't done well, we ha- it hasn't done well for a Star Wars film, right? It is still actually making a fair packet of money, isn't it? Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have the actual figures this time, but yeah, I don't know. I just heard that it's it, it's underperforming as they as they hoped. Um, it would be for a Star higher. Wars, yeah, film. for a Star Wars. Yeah, that's true. There's a caveat. Um, mm. <clears throat> the sacking of the two directors. That's that's an iffy. Yeah, what happened play. there? What I have heard is it was creative differences, right? Well, well what does that mean? Mm, they apparently they just they came from the Lego Movie and uh, Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Uh, it they they seems, wanted to make a comedy. It's yeah, maybe maybe they wanted a bit more ad libbing and they wanted a bit more sort of looseness. Uh, but when they got Howard in, he's just an old hand. Basically, he knew what he was doing, but. Mm. I don't know. It seemed like it was maybe not as tight as they wanted. I don't know. What have you heard, Merv? I heard it was, yeah, that creative. It was, they were a bit too, they were trying to make a comedy mm. and that's not what Star Wars is. Star Wars is an adventure action film with a bit of comedy. Well, well, so you guys miffed that it wasn't Lord and Miller? You guys? Oh, me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I thought you were talking to Merv as 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 the as, as a, a Star fandom, Wars nerd, fandom. Right, right. You know. No. What, what do you think? That it wasn't. That it wasn't more uh, sort of irreverent and comedic, and I think it had enough of that to mm. keep it going. It had enough. It didn't go beyond. It didn't go beyond the regular <clears throat> Star Wars franchise fare. There, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever people may say about it, you know, Disney has probably kept. A lot of that feeling going, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure what you think about how, yeah. I, I think there's some fans that didn't see this film ah. on purpose. Oh, really? Because they're not happy with, uh, you know, what Disney's doing to the franchise, etc. But, but they're too, I mean, there are people who wanted Lord and Miller's style and therefore have, have maybe um, 
objected to that. And there are people who just didn't want a solo film, like Merv was saying before. I don't know. It, but some people have said this this film was not necessary. What, apart from documentaries, what films are necessary, really? Well, is it necessary within the greater storyline? Well, was Rogue One? And that's one of the best Star Wars films. Hmm. What is the reason for this film to exist, Merv? Um, just to have fun. <laughs> just to expand on Han Solo a little bit. Yeah. And um, oh, I, I agree. I totally agree with Sadie. Movies yeah, are there for fun, enjoy. But I think the big fear is Star Wars fatigue. Oh, they are yeah. logging this horse. Yeah, but it's going to um, it's going to keep the going. Of that have been Star Wars is you, you had to wait. Mm. You know, you had to wait for the next one, and uh, yeah. So I think it is a bit of yeah Star Wars fatigue. So was there anything mm. that this film brought to the franchise that was, or you know, to the film that mm. was new? Was there anything? Yes. Go on. Chewbacca. <laughs> we finally well, he's got been to in see. previous films. Go on, man. But he was always a bit of a passive character. This one, we saw the full, angry, destructive, you know, Wookiee, which just went out. You know, we finally see him yeah. as, a, you know, that powerful character that he always is kind of just implied. That, that um, I, I agree. Yeah, that's that I hadn't noticed. So, you know, in The, the Last Jedi, he's basically a – a hairy hat stand, you know. It's he does he, do, he does fuck all in that film, and and here he rips some bastard's arms off. It was nice to see him come of age, yes. really. Yeah, apparently there's a yeah. Isn't there? Like I read, so I've forgotten this, but there's a scene where Han in <clears throat> Star Wars, I'm thinking, or Return, or maybe it was Empire. He warns C three PO that Wookies tend to rip people's arms off. When there was, I don't know, he, uh, yeah. he, and C three PO got a bit scared and stuff. And then we didn't see any of this until this film. We I think there were it. a lot of things like that in this film that <clears throat> that what was it in under twelve parsecs? Or, yes, you know. Yeah. Oh, this, is that the the Kessel Run? Or the Kessel Run. Yeah. 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 And a lot of yeah little nods to the other films that I think some people are complaining that got a bit too deep. I don't think it did. I don't. No, I don't reckon there's it did. There's probably a lot more in it that we're not. <laughs> seeing as well sure but. they underplayed a lot of that stuff um the the obvious one is the the hand shot first scenario right yeah. which yeah, can, yeah. can you explain this to us merv oh yeah well in the original before george decided to change everything mm. um he um yeah holding his hand shot grebo a uh, greedo first mm. in um the original star wars film and then it got changed so and a lot of people got <laughs> annoyed and it's you know, it's it's a T-shirt now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. First. Yeah. Well, why did Lucas and, change that? Oh, why did Lucas do a lot of things? Mm. Uh, did, he could. Did he just want to make Solo more sympathetic to viewers or something? Who know, you'd, you'd have to ask him. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, when you own something, you can do what you want with yeah, it. And yeah. Luckily, he's, he, he sold with it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's good. It was really quite understated. I didn't really notice that until after he'd, he'd shot him. I thought, hang on, why did he shoot him? There? Oh, he shot him because, aha, that's his character. So he, he's yeah. the guy that shoots first. You mm. know what I'm talking about? You look quizzical. Yeah, probably. I don't know. No, I don't know the folklore around it. I know you're talking about when Han shoots under the table in the that's original. That's in the original one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They altered that to... Um, to, to have him respond to a shot from Greedo as, okay. in, as in self-defence, which, okay, which okay. was not the original scene. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so to, to make, to draw a line under that. That was done, what, <clears throat> they didn't change the original film. Yeah, he they, altered, he put some scenes in and he fixed Oh, there a was a new up. edit. Yeah, like oh. a, like a what, what they call that, a remaster or something, Merv? So he yeah, did. Yeah, I a, think it was the, what, the um, 19... 97 when they okay. released it for its big anniversary right. and it got the big cinematic re-release. Okay. Okay, so that, it was almost a politically correct yeah. edit. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, okay. Kind of on that, uh, mm. do you have any any angle, you guys, on this um, this Lando pansexual thing? <laughs> I'm just curious. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like it. I, it's It's a curiosity. Um, so he's supposed to be getting it on with this. Uh, Is it enough? Well, robot. see the film. I went. I went a little bit deep down this rabbit hole okay. for some reason. Sure. And I, I found that the film's been accused of by some quarters of queer baiting. What is this? So 
so for the preview suggested that there was some sort of there was more than just flirting going on with Lando and and the robot and Han and there was this kind of homoerotic mm. angle to the film but okay. when the, when the yeah. film came that got a lot of um people on the on the camp side of things mm-hmm. you know a bit excited it's going to be the first uh you know bisexual pansexual character in the Star Wars uh, universe who's just Lando who's not yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah so uh but then the film came out and it didn't really deliver anything so it gets uh gets accused of um you know baiting the queer side of oh, I the see. equation get, trying, trying to just get them to on get, board just to get some more views but it well it it sort of hints that he doesn't mind a bit of droid sex Certainly, it yeah. Did, didn't yeah. really hint much else, did it? I mean, there was a little bit of bromance going on. There was with... that, yeah, where the robot says stop flirting. But, yeah, that was about it. Yeah. You know, but then I found out about this whole thing, this whole shipping idea. God, where, so if you're yeah. pushing for, if fan, in, in the world of fandom, if fans are pushing for a certain relationship to take place yeah. on their favourite show, um, they'll be shipping that relation, that idea. Who's doing the shipping? Two... The, the fans? Yeah, so if we wanted to see Lando and Han get together, for yeah. instance, we'd be shippers for oh. for Lando slash Han, and that relationship, um, because oh. it's a a same sex relationship, would be known as a slash. <laughs> right. So, so okay. we'd also be shipping yeah. a slash uh, Han hmm. slash Lando. A slash fiction kind of thing. Is that where that comes from? Slash comes from, you know, Han slash. Lando, yeah, uh, gotcha. um, Spock oh, slash so, Kirk, yeah. but it's generally used for same sex relationships. Uh, oh, the term slash C- Captain America and uh, uh, the Winter Soldier. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, are, yeah. are you shipping that or oh, everybody's shipping that? Okay, that's that's been shipped. That's slashing and shipping all over the place. It's very Is slashy. That... <laughs> it's slashy. Am I using these terms are we, correctly? Are we on the right track here, Merv? Uh, yeah, it very much came out of a um, interview with. Um, I think it was mainly John Kasdan mm, okay. who kind of said, oh, yeah, yeah, Lando, particularly the queer side of things. Mm-hmm. The pansexual in the sense that Lando will sleep with anything. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm currently reading Solo the novel. Oh, are you? Okay. Um, oh, sorry, not <laughs> Lucky anyway, you. The, not Solo the novel, so, but it's uh, Han Solo. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, yeah. Lando Adventure. Oh. And, yeah, that um, Lando is having – you know, kind of having a relationship with an alien. So, okay. so, so question about that. a female alien. Okay. Question about that, Merv. Who writes that novel and do they have permission from the franchise or yes. is that just an independent? Yes. Okay. This is, no. ca- this is part of the canon, is it? This is canon. Yep, it's one of the canon novels. It's fucking canon, man. It's so, I mean, let me, can I just jump in here with something that mm. has shit me a little bit? When... We're going to spoil a little bit, as usual here. At the end, when Kira gets online to the boss of Crimson Dawn, it's fucking Darth Maul. Yeah. Who who was sliced in two in, what was it, The Phantom Menace or one of those early ones? Yeah. Yep. Well, he's back. What's going on? He's been back for a long time. Because of? Back in the... In the Clone Wars cartoons, oh, yeah, see, and the Rebels cartoons. <laughs> see, right? Okay, oh, yeah, see, in the con- cartoons, this dude. is confusing yeah. to me. I heard something. Is this correct? Because I heard it the other day. I thought that can't be right. Mm. That that this uh, solo film exists uh, pre lightsaber. They haven't invented the lightsaber yet. Oh no! Oh, I thought it's. <laughs> I thought it sounded like bullshit, and it was just a bad review. I think someone because well because he got sliced. Before exactly. this film, right? Well, and he got sliced by a lightsaber. I, I got confused. I, I was just thinking, well, he hasn't been sliced in two yet. Ah, uh, yet. But the, the, another thing is the timeline here. Where do we put this? Where is this sitting? Uh, this is before Rogue One. Yes. Sure. Well, that's then um, just, which is just before and, A New Hope. Yeah. So this is probably, a, uh, you know, four or five years, or probably even a bit more because he's, what, 20, 21 in this thing. Mm. So. It's yeah. probably eight years before Rogue One. Okay, so th- three years mm. yeah. he, he, from the start of the film until the main action is about three years, yeah? Yeah, probably. so it's probably another eight years. Un- until, is, okay. You know, early 30s. So the, after, um, um, okay, so the, the Harrison Ford Han in The New Hope is about 32, or, I suppose. So it might, yeah, might be mean, about 10 years, or mm. I guess. Yeah, yeah okay. You, you look, There's you, got to be no. I'm just <laughs> yeah, saying. I don't know where this guy was coming from. There's got to be lightsabers around, doesn't there? 
Yeah, certainly. Well, yes, there was lightsabers in Phantom Menace and all yeah. those, which are set. Yeah. Which probably, are, well, how like, far before, though? Because well. this could have been happening during the Phantom Menace time, right? Like Luke, not Luke, what's his name? Anakin was a kid, probably. Oh, shit. Oh, it, it, uh, I'm, I'm getting let's tired not go there. Let's not go there. No. Let's talk about Woody Harrelson. Okay. Yeah, go for it. I've never <laughs> seen a film I didn't like Woody Harrelson in. He's no exception. Interesting. He's twirling guns. Yeah. Um, what did you think? Of Woody. or And any it's... other favourite <clears throat> characterisations in this? Because I've got a favourite character here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But go on. Um, well, I, no, I think Harrelson's fine. He's pretty much fine in most things. He, in late period Harrelson. I'm not a fan of, you know, white men can't jump, money train kind of Harrelson. Oh, okay. Know? Well, I probably haven't seen them all. It, no. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> as has. As much as you have. I, I don't think anyone's seen all of his films. Um, he's all right. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. I mean, Bet- Bettany was good too. I thought like mm-hmm. they got they, he was cast later. I think someone else. Uh, I heard an interview with Ron Howard. They had somebody else on board for Bettany's role, but they wanted to change it a bit, so they um they got someone new, which was Paul Bettany. Any favourite characters? Your end, Merv. Oh, outside of Chewbacca. Um, oh, was it Kira? She was Kira. I thought she held her own reasonably well. Yep. Um. When Paul Benet came on, I just did a little thing of, oh, there's the Disney stable. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He was in two big films of recent times, wasn't he, including this one? Mm. Yeah, so you kind of wonder if he did come on late, that might explain it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I... But the robot, I think, the, the droid. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I think also <clears throat> worth a mention mm. and and probably my possibly my char- favorite character in the whole film sure was the alien singing in a jar oh yes like the brain it was, it was just it was, was almost like a futurama like a little, brain yeah, yeah it's like a little miniature job of the hut with a few arms and yeah. he's in a jar but the jar's got a microphone on it and he sounds kind of like barry white <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a beautiful moment that was a nice and little... i think he's on screen for all of Two seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, that's a mini cantina sort of setup, isn't yeah. it? There's a, yeah, a yeah. singer and that little brain singing as well. Yeah, brain? Is it a brain? Is it uh, just? It a, seems to be more than a brain. More than a brain. Sorry. But, yeah, I was being alienist. It's got yeah. eyes and a mouth. You know. True. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, now there, there's a little hint at the end of this film as well, which pr- probably is a big hint about a gangster setting up a, a job on some. Was it? I can't remember the planet uh, name. Yeah, who's that gangster, Merv? Oh, Jabba. Are you referring to basically in the job with yeah. Jabba? Yeah, yeah. So it seems like he he's going to go like, because um, Harrelson's character was at Beckett. He's obviously been yeah. killed, and he was going to go out and do this job. It seems like Solo and Chewie are off to to Jabba's. Yeah. What's Jabba's planet? Is it? It's not Tatooine. Ta- 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're off there to start something. Is this the beginning of the shit that he got into with Jabba the Hutt? Well, it's his smuggling career. Yeah. Up to yeah. this point, he's, you know, this is, you know, harm, the career of Harm the Smuggler, and it's deciding to set him up. It's the beginning of I that, yeah. yeah. The only way it might pop in is the fact that I think they've announced that it might be doing a Boba Fett film. <laughs> of course, he's linked into those things yeah, as well. So, yeah. Could this be a little bit I, – I don't mind as many – I mean, the, until one really fucks up, I don't mind – watching Star Wars films until I get old, really. But could this be a bridge too far, a Boba Fett film? Mm. I'd like to he's, see it. Would you? Yeah. He's cool. He looks he's cool. He's a good character. He, is he? Mm. But they might spot. Just spoil. a bounty hunter. No, he's well, he was a favourite character, yeah. for instance. He, I mean, he looks cool and he does some cool things, but he's really on screen about, what, six minutes in, in all mm. films? I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe that's better because we don't know much about him. So flesh him out, perhaps. Yeah, mm. it may not be beholden to the rest of the Star Wars universe so much. And, yeah. You know, yeah. if they don't try and cram too much, mm. uh, you know, too many little side stories that relate to other films into it, it, it yeah, I, hang could on. actually be I've its just, own. I've just thought of something. Alien in a Jar film. Go I, on. Oh, I'd, I'd yeah. watch that. You'd, you'd pay, wouldn't you, to that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, Merv, it what is would, kind of nice. What would you like to see, Merv? Well, it's kind of nice having some of these films, I will confess, that are they're small. They're yeah. not mm. save the universe and everything's – it's just go yeah. on for the ride. Just dip into, 
just a chance to dip into the Star Wars universe that you sure. just wouldn't see. Some of the smaller little stories yeah, as opposed to, you know, the big wigs that are destroying and crushing everyone before them. And Yeah, well, so, yeah, for, it is kind well of... <laughs> for my money, this was better than The Last Jedi. I just I couldn't get on board with that one. I'll have, maybe I'll see it again and yeah. see if I'm wrong, but... Mm. I think this was more fun, more interesting, yeah. you know, better directed. What's um before we finish this up? Mm. Significance of the dice. Have we just had enough of the dice or <sighs> is there are they going anywhere? They keep showing up in these films. <laughs> I still don't know what they mean. I I'd forgotten where they came from originally. Merv, can you help us? I think they always just hung in the Millennium Falcon. It just is his lucky charm. Lucky charm. I guess yeah. that's you know that's part of the thing about Han Solo is you know, he's one of those guys who's kind of always semi unlucky, mm. but when it comes to the big things, yeah, that's where he comes through. You know, he's he's always you know, stumbling, but somehow, despite yeah. all the stumblings and the falling over, he yeah, until he the gets of to course where he needs to be. <clears throat> and I mean, this is I mean, the whole film's really about trusting and betraying mm. and all that kind of thing, and he does he does pretty well up until well, you know, up until mm, mm. yeah, mm. Mm, hi, mm, shall we? Mm, yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Well, Merv, thanks Any for... Any film that's been out for more than a year, you can spoil. Yeah, tr- okay, yeah. Well, I won't say it, though. Everybody knows, I think. Merv, yeah. thanks for taking some time out from work to uh, talk to us. Thanks, Merv. Right, my pleasure. Cheers. And my apologies for the uh, the croak and the coughing. No, it's no worse than mine. I think I'm. everyone's down with it. All right. Cheers, guys. See All you right. next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That's yes. Yeah.